Okay, everyone, uh, we're back here at the recording. Ugh, the old gramophone. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a sec. We're back at the gramophone, um, and we were just listening to that one record we had here that we got from the Creepy's Corner puzzle in the tunnels underground. So. Let's give this the old listen and see what we can figure out. Shitty hoof beats. I'll never forget the night it all began. That Ugh. dark, stormy, faithful night when I decided the time had come to rid the world of the creature. But it would take money to do that. Dun, dun, to get dun. money, I needed to confront my arch enemy, Nick, who had oh, recently become able to transform himself how did this ever get made into like an actual commercial product? This is fucking amateur hour going on right here. When his forest hideaway came into view, I dismounted and approached the door on foot so I could take him by surprise. Oh, surprise, huh? Another clap of thunder. You gotta have two. Always have two. Just to get the point across. Oh, this is terrible. I fear that he would hear me prove groundless, for a terrible storm began to rage, washing away the sound Jesus. of my footsteps. Peter getting hyped. Peered through the rain streaked window beside his front door, you can see him sitting in front of the fire. He had returned to human form, oh. but the malicious smile on his face suggested that he was recalling his recent poor sign exploits. I thought that said porcupine exploits. Like he turned into a porcupine and was just wandering around, throwing his quills at everybody. Step away from that bottle of warthog potion, I commanded, and give me the twenty gold coins you stole from my poor servant. I'm not going to give you a thing, save perhaps a taste of my sword. The grandfather of audiobooks, right here. It's all awful. I had drawn mine, and so commenced the fiercest sword fight the world had ever known. Oh, the sound effects are just terrible. I could make better ones. To our battle, to my surprise, Nick's experiences as a lower life form seemed to have improved his skill as a swordsman. I fainted. I parried, and yet victory eluded me. Oh no. And soon I began to feel uh, my strength ebbing from me. Why does this need to be so long? Rapidly, summoning every ounce of what little energy remained in my body. I, I want someone to like walk in while we're listening to this time. and just like stare Ray, awkwardly at Nancy and they're like, what in God's name were you listening to? Right arm, just above the elbow. Curse you. Curse you. A curse upon you, Nick. His words, punctuated as they were by an untimely clap of thunder, sent a shiver down my spine. Save your breath, I intoned. And give me those gold coins. Here, take your precious coins. Ugh. He tossed the bag of coins onto a chair. But as I reached for them, he reached for his bottle of potion. And in a matter of seconds, my night had gone from bad to horrible. Just like this audio play. Oh, thank God it's over. <laughs> okay. So, I think what's actually important to note about that, if I remember right, is the sound effects, I believe. That's what you want to keep track of. So I played I'm the record. Cupid's Corner has to do with the strange pictures above the letters on that trivet. Can't check that off yet. Give Mr. Archer the dress I finished for him. Check. I did that. That's done. Must have missed that earlier. Figure out which symbols to press. Reach name, no. Find out what the key. Yeah, Check. we got that. 
Okay. So, huh. Where's the trivet here? Yeah, here it is. So, these, I'm assuming, like, they're all coins, right? Coins. They're all sound effects from the play. And I'm assuming that each sound effect corresponds to a letter that t spells something out. And we need to figure out what it spells. So I'm just going to give the, the thing, the record, a quick listen to again. And I'm going to write down uh, what exactly we have to do if I can find a piece of paper to write on and a pen. Give me two seconds. Sorry. <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. Okay, let's give this thing another listen to and we'll see exactly what it is that we need to write down here. Oops, can't play this record until I oh, take the bullshit. other one off. Come on. Just busy work. Fine. There we go. I'm gonna write on my phone bill because I don't give a shit. So I got your feet first. I had come to rid the world of the creature, but it would take money to do that, and to get money. And then we got two claps of thunder. Who had recently become able to transform himself fittingly into a giant port hog. Rain. When his forest hideaway came into view, I dismounted. The door. Door opens, footsteps. Clap of thunder and door opens, footsteps. Clashing swords, clashing I fear swords. That you would hear me proof around this, for a terrible storm began to rage, washing away the sound of my footsteps. Thunder and coins. I see him sitting in front of the fire. He had returned to human form, but the malicious smile on his face suggested that he. Okay, so we can take this shit. <laughs> Just happy music after that. Okay, so we got hoofbeats, which are the horse I'm gonna assume. So G O O. Rain is D. Good. F. Footsteps. E. Swords. L. L. O. Good fellow. Is what that spells out. I don't feel... I think it has anything to do with this. Or does it? Oh yeah, okay. Good fellow. Flint, 7.025 megahertz. Puck! That's who Josiah played in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Puck. Bill away here. Flute knows me as Puck. Uh, what is that? Gave, gave his cue and told him what he was supposed to say in reply. He thought it was a joke, but that's okay. I can trust him. Pyramus. Pyramus. 7.057 megahertz. He was in a foul mood, but I told him his cue and gave him his reply. I told him to write it down, and he did because I could hear his pen scratching on the paper. Wonderful. Thisbe, 7.050 megahertz. It looks like gave, some kind of record of the people Josiah talked to on his ham radio. I gave her her line, then had her say it over and over until she knew it by heart. She knows the cue line to don't have to worry about her. So, as you can guess, that uh, has something to do with the radio. I haven't done that yet. Oops, haven't done that. 
But we can check off some other stuff. Check Figured that out. Figure out how to unlock That's the journal. Done. It would be okay to look through the Shakespeare book he has on his desk and use the frequencies to talk to his ham radio friends and see if they know anything I should know. So that's our next move, is to go talk to Richard Topham and see if we can't find that Shakespeare book somewhere. What's cooking? Well, I'll talk to you later. She's you got nothing betcha. to say as usual. She's been useless this whole fucking mystery. So off we go to Richard's place. Oh. <laughs> if I can figure out not to close the door on myself. See what good old Rich is up to. Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Yo, what's up? Now what? Could I see that copy of A Midsummer Night's Dream you have there? Why? Well, you said it was Josiah's favorite play. I'd just like to take a look at it. It's a very old copy. I'd rather it not be handled unnecessarily, lest it fall completely apart. I'm sorry, okay. it's true, but request denied. Do you mind if I look around some more? Be my guest. Dickhead! Okay, so you can't get the book that way, but luckily we do know another way into his place. So we can look at it without his permission. Which is always happy. And that is through the tunnel. Light up this dusty old shitty place. Guess I better not leave the lights on. Does it matter? I don't hear anybody. Now would be a good time for me to sneak inside and have a quick look at that Shakespeare book. Like he could be in the bathroom. You don't know. So he's actually in lesson with somebody right now in that private room, but his cat, his ugly You're demon in, from hell, You're disturbing us. isn't going to stop meowing until you find this stupid mouse. And if you leave it too long, he'll come out and you'll get a game over because apparently getting caught by Richard Topham is just the ultimate death sentence in this game. Okay, so we can flick around this desk Josiah must have circled these quotes, but why? Thou speakest all right. I am that merry wanderer of the night as Pyramus is. Something tells me I better write down all the stuff that's circled here in my journal. Shall we their fond pageant see, Lord, what fools these mortals be? Flute and Thisbe, if we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while all these visions did appear. So, we gotta remember which line to say to which person, I guess. So, Merry Wander is Pyramus. Um, Fools is Flute. And Shadows is Thisbe. Hopefully, God, I hope I can remember that. I think she writes it down in her book, anyway. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can look at anything else around his desk. You would think you could, because that looks like you could look at it, but I don't think so. I think it's just the book. Can go back here, though. Is that all you can look at? <laughs> Got it. Phew. Meet with Jay Archer at 9.30 a.m. about money. That's today. It's Jim Archer, he had a meeting with him, I guess. <laughs> really? Every time? Okay. I don't know what I'm supposed to get from here. But whatever, I guess. Uh, I think that might be it. Okay. I think that's it in here. I hope so. Anyway. I can't go out the front door. He'll hear me. Yeah. Close it quietly then. Where the hell is this trap door? I don't even know where the hell it is. <laughs> oh god. I have no idea. Oh, there it is. Under the rug. 
Okay, perfect. Why he wouldn't hear that compared to a front door opening, I don't know. You'd still hear it, but whatever. So he traveled back. Now I don't need to see Creepy's Corner anymore. Guess I better not leave the lights on. You don't have to say that every fucking time. Just turn them off. <coughs> oh, sorry. So we got that. Now we can go give people on the radio their lines. The old carriage house. We're actually getting real close to the end of the game. I actually, like, I forget how short these games are when you know, like, which, what, what to do in what order. Like, even though I'm not 100% sure, I still have an idea, and yeah, it's, it's going pretty quick. Still don't know why they need to show us this animation every single time, but whatever. Like, they must have been really impressed, whoever animated that must be like, yeah, they're gonna have to sit there and see that every single time. Okay. So they need to be on... Uh... Or did she write it down? Did she write it down? No. Ugh. I think it was 7.025, I think. Oh, it's just in his journal, so I guess we can just look at them. 7.025, 7.057, and 7.050. So 7.025 is flute, and his line is the fawn pageant. It was, god damn it, my memory is rough today. 7.025, that's what I thought. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Speak to me, hello? This is Flute, but you sure don't sound like Puck, so explain yourself. Uh, my name's Nancy Drew. So where's Puck? Well, I'm pretty sure Puck's real name was Josiah Crowley. And I hate to say it, but he passed He's away He's fucking this dead, year. bud. Sorry. Oh, that's a shame. Heck, I never got to give him his sentence. What sentence is that? Well, see, a while back, Puck dictated a sentence to me and told me that if and when he Who are these random people? Are they just people in the play? That he... That he was in? the passage, will you tell me the sentence? It seems weird that people would just agree to do this. Especially seeing as Puck's no longer with us. Just tell me, God. Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. That's it. Let me check my logbook for the response. Uh... Now I'm supposed to say... Leave by road ah, sorry, when that's the my phone. owner is in, because then there will be thieves about. Leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about? Those were Puck's exact words. Yes, I'm sure Flute is his real is name. Is Flute your he... real name? No, it's just what Puck insisted on calling me. What'd you say his real name was? Josiah Crowley. Strange. I never heard of him. So Why is that strange? Now, why me was this why are these people talking to you, know, him, if they don't even know who he is? Said he owned his own studio. He didn't own a studio, what and dick. he certainly didn't live just in Just catfishing Hollywood. people before oh, catfishing God. was a thing. So he was just lying to me. What a piece well, of that's shit. All right. I it's not alright. Like he I told forced you to do this shit, <laughs> and he doesn't know what that means. In any case, he forced you to do this shit, and he didn't even tell you who he was. And he never told us a real name, either. Shit. So that question was pointless. Okay, so Pyramus is 7.057. And his line is... The Wanderer of the Night. 7.057. Whatever. We can only turn it one way. Zero five. God damn it! Why do we gotta go the whole way around? Is anyone out there? Hello? Can anyone hear me? This is Pyramus. Who are you? My name's Nancy Drew. Another Does somebody random. named Puck usually call you on this frequency? Somebody named Puck used to. 
apparently he found something better to do. Haven't talked to him in months. Well, that's because, because it's just a secret club that I don't ago. know about. You no. just talk to each other over how many That's a good excuse, I guess. Weird shit. How'd you know he called me Pyramus? I'm because a friend of a friend shit. of his. I found your name and radio frequency in his journal. So why are you talking to me? Did you say I mean, Puck, ever ask you to tell him something whenever he read a certain passage from Shakespeare? Whenever he rattled off this Shakespeare quote, I was supposed to rattle off this stupid saying he gave me. You know about that. Long story. But I'm if I were through to his garbage, the quote, I told there's you. no reason why you can't tell me the stupid saying, right? Well, come to think of it, he never said the quote had to come from him. So, yeah, I guess I could tell you. Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. How'd you know? Long story. What did he tell you to say in response? Wait a minute. I had to write it down. Here, you're gonna love this. Ugh. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. Indeed. I told you it was stupid. I really appreciate your help. Just out of curiosity, what kind of car did Puck drive, do you know? I don't think he had a car. And he tried to tell me he was rich. Over and out. Like, I guess this guy just got off telling people lies. Telling everybody he's some rich dude. We all gotta have something, I guess, in life. Okay, last one. Fisbee is 7.050, and her line is... Uh, shadows have offended. Is anyone out there? Hello? Can anyone hear me? I'm Thisby, but only Puck calls me that. Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm afraid I have some bad news about Puck. <gasps> oh dear, they closed the play he was starring in. Shut up, phone. That's why I haven't heard from him. He's too far down in the dark. Shut up. Oh, I was afraid it was something like that. Actually, you haven't heard from him because he passed away several months ago. He'd be oh dead. My. That's worse, isn't it? And after all that rigmarole he went through, making sure I knew my line and understood my cue. Your cue? Yes, you see, Puck, or whatever his real name is, or was. Puck wanted to share his love of. It's acting, like this is just the weirdest so group of people me I've a ever line met. To say, a very curious line, I might add, and Who told would agree me to, to do this? only after I heard my cue. A passage written by Mr. William Shakespeare. So if I cue you with a passage, you'll respond with the line he gave you to say? Immediately. I know it by heart, you see. Here it goes. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. <clears throat> the authorities are alert for bad water. So do not go this way. Jesus, she the sounds like she's dying herself. The authorities bad water, so do not go this way. That's what I was to say. Although my delivery was much better when Puck was coaching me. And when I wasn't and dying now, of cancer, as Puck apparently. was fond of saying, I bid you adieu. Over and out. Thanks. Thanks for the conversation. Okay, so we got our three lines here from the peoples. From Pyramus, from Thisbe, and from Flute. And if you haven't figured it out. Yeah, okay. Flute is a character in a Midsummer Night's Dream. You have to take his sentence and translate it into these hobo symbols, which are. In um, the living room or the parlor of the hotel. So that's where we're gonna go and try and decode this shit. It's in this newspaper. I've seen these symbols before on that big clock in the attic of the carriage. What house. a coincidence. Real lucky that these are all here. 
Okay, uh, hold on one sec. I'm gonna grab another piece of paper. I'm really unprepared for this. I should have done this a little bit better. Hold on. Okay, so let's look through and let's see what the hell we got here. Okay, so... Flute. Um, leave by road when the owner is in. Because then there will be thieves about. So leave by road, I'm assuming, is hit the road. Because I don't think there's anything else here. So hit the road, which is the circle and two arrows. While well, this, the owner is in is the weird horseshoe looking thing. Uh, because there are thieves about is the two over ten. That's flute. Okay. Puramus, a barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. So barking dog is the two W's together. Would do well to hold his tongue. Uh, is there not one for... I guess keep quiet is probably what they want us to do, which is like the double diamonds. And what was the last part of it? Dangerous neighborhood. Which is the weird box within a box. And that's Pyramus, Pyramus, however you want to say it. And then the last one is the authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way. The authorities are here are alert. The weird arch with the dot for bad water, I think, is the other one. So the square over the waves. So don't go this way, which means there's no use going this way. So the circle with the arrow going left, I believe. Right. For bad water, so do not go this way. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you need to know. There should be three for each. So now let's punch them into that clock and see where we're at. I don't mind the music. It's nice and upbeat. Uh, I do mind having to do this every time. Just leave the fucking stairs down. So I don't have to continue doing this all the time. And I still seriously doubt the technology would be available at this point in time for something like this to be constructed. Doesn't make any sense to me. So flute is these, the two arrows, the horseshoe looking thing, and the two over 10. Now Thisbe is the third one, so she is the arch with the dot, the square over the waves, and the arrow going left. And Pyramus is the two W's, the two diamonds, and this weird box looking thing bottom. Okay. Am I supposed to know the symbol for that? Because I don't. 